Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us for one of my absolute favorite subjects, What's the Buzz About Bees? This is a little presentation about honeybees and their importance and why we have them in our world. My name is Miss Molly from the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service in Bear County. Did you know that honeybees are insects? And if you're an insect, you have certain characteristics that you share with all other insects. And these characteristics tell us that this animal is an insect and not something else. All insects have a head. They have a thorax, which is the middle body part. And then they have a big giant abdomen that usually is the biggest part of their body and the part other than the head that we see the best. All insects also have six legs. They can have up to four wings, and they have two antenna, or one pair of antenna. In a honeybee, the antenna is extremely important because that's how they, one of the ways that they communicate. They use their antenna to smell each other and know if you belong in the colony, or if you're a, an invader trying to come in and steal some of the honey or kill off some of the babies. So the antenna are very important in helping them to smell and know if, if another bee belongs inside of that hive or not. Honeybees are so good at doing what they do. We all know that honeybees are great pollinators, but the reason why they do so good at pollinating is for a couple different reasons. Their body is built to pollinate. If you look at a honeybee, they're extremely furry. They have fuzz all over their body, and that fur allows them to pick up pollen from a flower and then drop it off into another flower as they bounce from flower to flower. When pollen is moved from one flower to another, this is called pollination. Honeybees also have little scooped out parts in their legs where they're able to pack tons of pollen in there to take back to the colony. And when they're moving and picking up that pollen, it's sprinkling into the air and the air and the wind is moving it from flower to flower also. That little pollen pack on their leg is called a pollen basket. And then honeybees also like to pick up nectar. Nectar is the sweet stuff that flowers produce. Nectar is the reason why butterflies are attracted to your flowers. That's what they drink. Nectar, once it's been picked up from the honeybee and taken back into the nest and spit back up and put into their cells, when all of the water evaporates out of it, it turns into a syrup, which we call honey, and that's what we consume. Only honeybees can make honey. Humans cannot make artificial true honey. But a honeybee has special lapping mouth parts that help them lap up and pick up some of the nectar from the flowers. And then they have a special stomach called a honey stomach that stores that honey so that they're able to throw it back up when they get back into the colony. So when you eat honey, you're actually eating nectar and a little bit of bee spit. And the enzymes in their stomach help make what we know as honey. Honeybees also have a stinger. Some people think that honeybees are bad insects because they can sting us, but honeybees do so much more good than they do bad. A honeybee does not want to sting you because you may have heard that honeybees will die if they do sting you. This is true because a honeybee stinger is barbed, which means that when it enters your skin, it gets stuck, just like a fish hook gets stuck inside of a fish's mouth. And when that stinger gets stuck in your skin, attached to the stinger are all of the bee's guts. And when your insides are not on your inside anymore, you're not going to live much longer. So honeybees really only sting when they feel threatened, if you grab them, or especially when you get close to their house. Honeybees don't like anybody to mess with their home. And so if you come upon their house and you're mowing or you're throwing a ball too close by or you put your sprinkler on and spray it with water, then they will come out and they will try to sting you. But a honeybee going after a flower is not really interested in stinging anybody. Let's talk a little bit about the honeybee's life cycle. A honeybee has a complete life cycle. The honeybee life cycle is four stages. It starts out as a queen laying a bunch of little tiny eggs that kind of look like little miniature pieces of rice inside of the cells. Those eggs will hatch and turn into larvae, which are kind of white, grubby looking things that will get fed by the workers and never leave the nest. On the edge there, we can see some of the white little larvae right next to the pupa all curled up and those nurse bees are going to be taking care of them and feeding them constantly. 
the larva then will become pupa. Let's take a look at a, at a frame of honeybees that has a lot of pupa, capped pupa on there. You can see all those workers crawling around and taking care of those babies that are inside there. If you're a honeybee adult, you can be a drone, which is the boy, you could be a worker, which is the majority of the colony, or you might be lucky enough to be fed a lot of royal jelly and be a queen. You can see all the different sizes there. Queens are the largest in the colony because she's chock full of eggs that she's laying every day. They say that a queen can lay up to 2,000 eggs in a day. This queen is marked. A lot of beekeepers like to put paint on the back of their queen on the thorax so she's easier to find when you're looking inside the hive because you don't want to accidentally squish her. Queens are the most important bee in the whole colony. She is in charge of everybody and she controls everybody through the use of chemicals that the other bees pick up with their antenna. They smell with their antenna. To become a queen bee, you're just a regular female egg that is laid but you're fed constantly with royal jelly. Royal jelly is a special type of food that is produced by special worker bees. Queens also are in special cells because she's so big, that, that larva is so large, she has to be in a big peanut kind of shaped cell so that she has plenty of room to grow and develop. New queens are made in colonies when an old queen dies or the old queen gets old and she isn't doing a very good job but you should only ever have one queen inside of your nest. The drone is in the very center. Drones are smaller than the queen, but they have giant eyes, very wide bodies. The drones are also the only males in the entire colony. Can you spot the drones in this picture? Look for the bees that have the biggest eyes. They touch all the way on the top, kind of like wearing big giant goggles. I see one here. I see two facing each other here. Here's another one right there. There's one down there. And here's one there. And finally, the last type of adult honeybee is the worker bee. These are the smallest in the colony, shorter and thinner than both the drone and the queen, and all are females. While the queen is the most important bee in the colony, worker bees are also extremely important. Worker bees are responsible for all of the jobs that get done in the nest, and all of their jobs are based on their age. So the older you get, the more able you are to leave the nest and get further away from your mother. When you're the youngest worker, you're called a housekeeper. Housekeeper's job is to clean up the cells that they just came out of so they make room and they make it tidy for a new egg to be laid in that spot. When you're a little bit older, about three days to 11 days old, you're called a nurse bee. Nurse bee's jobs are to feed the larva and to take care of the queen. Just like a nurse in a hospital's job is to take care of patients, these nurse bees take care of their patients, which is their queen, and other larvae. Sometimes you, when you're a little bit older as a nurse bee, you're able to produce that special royal jelly and you're able to fill up those queen cells with royal jelly to make a new queen. When they get a little bit older than that, when they're 12 to 16 days old, their bodies actually produce the wax that they use to build the nest. So just like our houses are built of, we use wood and we use nails to build our home, Honeybees use wax, and everything in their nest is made out of wax. You can see that nice, clean, pretty wax there in that picture. And then you can see the honeybee that is producing wax off of little glands on her abdomen. She makes those wax, and then she pulls it off and constructs it so that it makes these perfect cells. And then when you're a little bit older than that, when you're 17 to 20 days old, you are now allowed to kind of go out to the entrance of the hive and guard the entrance. Guard bees job is to make sure that the one the bees coming back into the nest belong there. So they smell them, they smell them with their antenna, they determine that they belong and that they're an, another sister and allow them to enter. The oldest bees in the colony are called the foragers. They're about 22 days old to 43 days or sometimes in the winter they'll live as long as 60 plus days. Forager's job is to go to the flowers and pick up the pollen and nectar 
bring it back into the nest so that all of the worker bees have food. A beekeeper is somebody who keeps bees for a number of different reasons. A beekeeper might keep bees for honey, for pollination, as a hobby, or maybe just for fun. They might have a couple of hives in their backyard. Some beekeepers who keep it for honey or for pollinating use these bees as their career. Their job is to be a beekeeper, whereas others keep bees as a hobby for fun or for a little extra money. Just like other people need tools to do their job, beekeepers need their own special tools to get their job done. Some of those tools that they use include things that help them protect themselves. A beekeeper always needs a suit whether it's just a jacket like here or it's a full suit that covers them from all the way to the top to the bottom. Beekeepers also use gloves. Gloves help protect your hands so that bees don't sting you. Beekeepers also use something called a hive tool. Hive tool is how they help break open hives because bees love to use wax and then a sticky substance called propolis that they make that seals everything up nice and tight. They glue everything together inside of their hive. And hive tools are so necessary so that you're able to open up your hive and be able to do things inside the hive. A lot of beekeepers also use bee brushes. Bee brushes are used to move the bees off of your frames or out of the way so that you're able to see things inside of the hive. It gently moves them without hurting them and allows you to be able to see through those bees. Beekeepers also have to use a smoker. Smokers help the bees stay calm. So we will smoke the guard bees at the front so that they won't set off the alarm and say that someone's messing with their hive. The smoke masks the smells and the pheromones that they emit that says, there's somebody in our hive, everybody get upset. Instead, they smell the smoke, and so they can't really communicate with one another. It helps calm them down. Bees live in hives that we call boxes, and inside of those boxes hang frames. This hive is made up of four different boxes. Every hive can be composed differently. Some only have one box, some have four like this one, some may have less, and some may have more. 